Fox 14 News at 9. I mean, he served two combat tours in Iraq, and he comes home for this? I want to know, I want to know why. KFOX 14 obtains a video of inside the jail that gives a better view of what happened the night a decorated war veteran died in the El Paso County Jail. Good evening, I'm Erica Castillo. And I'm John Purvis, first on Fox tonight. Over the past few months, we've seen a number of high-profile cases involving suspects who died in police custody. Most recently, the in-custody death of Freddie Gray in Baltimore, a case that sparked widespread protests and violence. Gray somehow had 80% of his spine severed while restrained en route to jail. Six officers involved in Gray's arrest now face murder charges. Key to the investigation into Gray's death is video showing the events leading up to his arrest. Tonight, we bring you another video, this one involving the in-custody death of a Fort Bliss soldier, James Brown, who died at the El Paso County Jail. Erica has the story you'll see only on KFOX. In July 2012, I brought you a series of reports concerning the mysterious circumstances surrounding the death of Sergeant Brown in jail. We fought all the way to the Texas Attorney General to get the video from inside the jail to learn exactly what happened. Now, only on KFOX 14, we have obtained the video of the moments before the death of Sergeant Brown, and there are parts of this video that are very graphic. Here is what the video shows happened that day in the jail and what is new and happening with this case now. Sergeant James Brown served two tours of combat duty in Iraq. The decorated 26-year-old was on active duty at Fort Bliss in July 2012 when he left his family for the weekend to self-report for a two-day DWI sentence at the El Paso County Jail. When he checked in, jail records show that Brown reported in writing to the jail that he was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress. Brown's mother says the instant he checked into the jail, he contacted her. He said they're trying to make me stay seven days instead of two days, so I just want to pay the court fine and, and get out of here. He asked her to send the money to pay the fine in lieu of the jail time, which she did by the following morning, but by that time something had gone terribly wrong. Hey, James, you want to talk to me, James? Now, after KFOX 14 obtained this video taken by a guard, we have a much better idea of what happened. At some point, Brown appeared to have an episode in his cell that caused him to bleed. It's not clear from where. When he refused to answer or speak to the jail guard, a team of guards in riot gear was brought in to storm his cell. Brown appears to show little to no resistance from this perspective and in fact at no point appears to resist. Within seconds, Brown begins frantically telling the guards he cannot breathe. Then this. From beginning to the end of this recording, Brown would state that he could not breathe at first frantically. Then in what appears to be physical distress. And finally, as he begins to collapse and can no longer hold himself up. As he is taken to the infirmary, Brown collapses and is hoisted up off the ground into the air and carried. During the time of this recording, Brown states at least 20 times that he cannot breathe. He is given two injections of lorazepine, which is a sedative. Dude, please take it off. Take it off. Take it off. Please take the mask off. I cannot breathe. Brown also begs for water. Can I please have water? Are you going to calm down? Yes, sir. After repeated pleas, he is given half a Dixie cup of water. About 15 minutes later, he is given another half a Dixie cup. Oh, they're cutting off my air supply. And eventually allowed to wash pepper spray out of his eyes under a sink. I can't breathe. After which he collapses on the floor. Brown is dragged to a wheelchair. From here, Brown's physical condition appears to deteriorate even more, and he is left nude in a cell where he shows shallow breathing and is no longer blinking or being responsive. Brown appears to no longer be capable of pleading for anything. Attorneys say at no time was an ambulance or 911 called for help. 
I pray that new laws protecting soldiers in custody will be implemented, that the military adopt new policy procedures in regards to their soldiers being held in custody by an outside agency. If these changes can be made and our soldiers are protected and another family never has to experience what my family has, then my son's death would not be in vain. Brown's mother sent us this statement today. Brown's mother turned to KFOX 14 and says she wants Americans to see this video and see exactly what happened to her son in El Paso County. Brown was eventually placed on a gurney and wheeled out of the jail to be taken to University Medical Center where he was officially pronounced dead, something the family's attorneys Jason Bowles and B.J. Crow insist showed a gross violation of Brown's constitutional rights. When a 26-year-old active military person checks into jail, for a court-imposed sentence on a Friday, and he leaves Sunday, you know, in a casket, something went horribly wrong there. Brown had no criminal record, and toxicology tests showed no illegal drugs in his body. The autopsy results cited natural causes by sickle cell crisis, and the sheriff stands by that in this statement released to us today. Mr. Brown's death was an unfortunate tragedy. The sheriff's office has conducted a thorough review of the facts surrounding Mr. Brown's death, and based upon all the evidence obtained, determined that his death was caused by a pre-existing medical condition. The specific evidence cannot be discussed because of pending litigation. Medical studies show sickle cell crisis lies dormant until it is triggered by dehydration and stress. His attorneys say apparently more stress than can be triggered by coming under fire in combat twice, which Brown did. His family says Brown showed no history of ever having a sickle cell crisis incident in his life, and is convinced the medical episode was triggered by his treatment in the jail. He was bleeding out the ears, the nose, the mouth, his kidneys shut down, his blood pressure dropped to a very dangerous level, uh, and his liver shut down. This is a federal civil case that is expected to go to court in El Paso in October. His family is suing for damages, claiming violation of the American with Civil Liberties Act because of Brown's PTSD, excessive force, and lack of proper medical attention. You can see a longer and much more detailed clip of Sergeant Brown's encounter in the El Paso County Jail on our website, kfoxtv.com. That's also where you can find some of Erica's past stories on this case.